find product links below and hundreds more videos on my channel. Hi everyone, welcome back. So uh, today I want to show you a tip and I'm just going to take you through the process of me doing it. It'll take about five minutes and uh, hopefully that's not too long and I'm basically just going to take you through the steps that I'm doing and uh, hopefully you find this helpful. And this is basically the way that I found works best for me. It's not the only tool that does this, but this is the way that I found works best for me for correcting distortion. And uh, especially when it's really extreme stuff like this, when it's not just from one photo, but when it's from something like a panorama uh, like this. And uh, by the way, this is uh, three HDR images that are stitched together somewhere there and there. And uh, HDR, of course, for those of you that don't know, is just merging of a bunch of photos together, a bunch of exposures to get more detail in the shadows and in the highlights. So um, what I've done here is I've just taken those three photos. I won't show you the full process, but it is very simple. Uh, I, uh, before this was open, I just went to File, opened up Photoshop, went to File, Automate, and Photo Merge. And then select my files, select these two, and I just left it on, on auto for this and pressed go. And that was it. And then within about a minute, I had this. So what I'm going to show you is uh, what I do with this to bring it to be like that, um, which is, you know, this isn't perfect, but um, just uh, it'll show you the method. So uh, ignore this. That's just a tripod that I started removing. And then I realized that I'm not sure where I'm going to crop this image in the end. So, um, I'm going to go to Filter, and then I'm going to go to Liquify. Now, within the Liquify tool, I'm going to leave it basically at the default values. In fact, what I can do is I can just turn off Advanced Mode, uh, and then just leave it at Brush Pressure 100%. I think that's the default. Maybe the default is 50, um, but I'm just going to go with 100. And then the brush size just depends on the size of your image. So, you know, you, uh, you would press control and option and uh, that's that's for mac so for pc it'll be slightly different but control and option and then you drag left and right uh, to change your the size of your brush and uh, dragging up and down changes your brush pressure as you can see up here when i drag up and down it changes my brush pressure so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start with the corners. And this is something with the corners on this specific image, I can be pretty rough with it and just drag quite um, quite harshly. But I do it in, in increments. I do it in small um, sort of small goes, um, small brush moves. And um, in the corners, I don't mind too much. Now this will, um, when you stretch an image, you obviously you lose a little bit of the quality because it sort of stretches the pixels a little bit, but it's very, very small and really you need to drag an image a lot to get a, a noticeable, I mean with most images, to, to get a noticeable uh, decrease in quality that would actually make a difference or would make me want to not use this. I've had images where I've, you know, spent hours fixing something um, which mainly, you know, something like someone's eyes, if you need to fix uh, something like that, then it could take a very long time. This is something pretty simple. Uh, maybe I'll show you that eyes thing in another video. But basically there was, um, again, some distortion I had to correct, but it was on someone's face. So I had to be very, very careful with uh, with what I was doing. Because uh, obviously otherwise it would look, the person's face would look unnatural. Uh, but here what I'm doing is just very sort of mild brush moves. The reason why I'm I'm zooming out of the image is because Photoshop doesn't want to let you scroll below the image when it's close up like this. And that means that when I go to the edge here, I want to sometimes drag on the edge and I can't drag from here. I have to be, I have to drag like this because I'm dragging from this edge. And um, like that. I'm just doing sort of finding these little issues. First of all, the big noticeable issues and then just going through the image again. And um, and fixing smaller things. And then I just generally get smaller and smaller with my brush size, and um, and that works well for me. Now this lake was actually sort of going that way because it was coming a little bit closer to me, I think, or it was, um, I think it was going a little bit that way, but obviously that doesn't look very natural in the photo. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it much more flat like that. 
and um, there we go and so uh, basically now I'm almost done and then now I'm going to basically go over the very small thing so this house looks sort of a little bit bent and by the way, if you make a really bad mistake, you would uh, need to uh, see that mistake when you first make it and then press undo because it doesn't want to let you undo more than once. When you want to undo more than once, you have to press restore all. So, uh, and, that, and that's specifically with this tool. Maybe there's a way to um, have more undos in this tool, but I'm not sure of what that is, you know, how you would do that. But basically, if you make a mistake, I found that generally you can... Uh, if you can't undo and you found a mistake that you did, if you dragged something a little bit too much, you can just drag it the, the opposite way. And then you will have to do that a lot of times before you start losing resolution. Photoshop is very good um, with the way that it does it. So you will eventually, if you keep dragging back and forth, I found that I had to do it about, on, like for example, like I said, um, that... Um, that image of the eyes, the person's eyes, that was, uh, I had to go back and forth on the eyes quite a lot and then I lost some resolution. Um, but I, I think I went over it about 50 times. Um, that is sometimes the amount of work that I would put into an image. Uh, you know, just spend hours and hours on an image. If that image is important to me, and uh, for me I, I find that it is important sometimes to go over an image and spend a lot of time on it. Because I think in the end it's worth it. I think that's what makes um, you know, makes a person's work better, um, you know, than the competition potentially, is if you're really, really willing to put in the time and, you know, and fix those tiny little things and, you know, spend a few hours on a person's eyes, you know, if obviously if that photo is important, um, in order to make that photo really, really stand out and uh, just to remove that little bit of distortion. Of course, that is uh, ex an exceptional uh, thing. I wouldn't normally spend that long fixing distortion and uh, okay so here I've fixed that as much as possible it's gonna be very small in the image so I'm not gonna worry too much about that I'm gonna fix this house up uh, just a little bit so see that was a little bit too much and so I'm gonna I undid that and then I changed my brush size with um, with things like houses you have to be very gentle because otherwise you sometimes end up with having to correct your own mistakes a lot and and that just ends up taking a lot of time. So, uh, and it's just because there's so many lines in the house and as soon as one of them is wonky, it's sort of really noticeable. Let's say if I did this roof uh, and I straightened that out, but then I made the window too, you know, too bent downwards. So um, yeah, just be really gentle on, on houses and buildings. Um, most of the time, you know, I find that, that uh, that's the right way for me to go about it. And I'm going to bring this a tiny bit that way. I mean, I am already mostly finished on this image, but uh, I'm just going to take you through to the end. This is mainly it. If you've understood, you know, what I'm explaining in this uh, video, then you can, you know, end the video here. But if you want to see me go through with this until the end of the image, then you're welcome to stay and, um, and watch. But basically, that's uh, pretty much it. So, um, you know, for those of you guys that are leaving now, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and stuff. And um, I'll see you in the next video if you subscribe. Over here, I've got a little bit of distortion. And, uh, okay, so we still have this sort of curved feeling on, um, on here. And that's going to be something that isn't going to be easy to perfectly correct because what you're going to end up doing is dragging sort of you're going to end up dragging that a little bit too much and uh, generally if you do make a mistake like that you can just drag it back down but um, here I'm just going to have to be pretty gentle with it and just see if, see how much I can correct this and make it feel um, straight uh, and rather than sort of a bent um, bit of grass because this was you know this house was actually on this path so that is that is quite a big bend um, in reality but in the photo I don't want it to look like that 
and uh, OK. So to me, for now, that looks pretty good. I may still uh, change the image. But uh, for now, I really like how it looks. This works for me. And I'm going to, you know, I'm going to still go over this tiny, tiny little things like that where something doesn't quite work and, uh, you know, has a little bit of distortion. But uh, yeah, that's it. You'll find the full, um, you know, the, uh, a link to this completed image down below in case you want to see it. And um, thanks for watching. I will see you in the, uh, in the next video. All right, guys.